Kanye and everybody else, but mostly Kanye. I know you're on a journey of free thought and escaping your mind prison, so I'm just gonna get this out real quick, stick with me, I hope this will make sense when I'm done, but you're actually being indoctrinated by an old neoconservative white man and a cabal of dishonest reactionaries who have seeped into the public discourse via dark money from libertarian billionaires. But perhaps I've said too much. So hello, I'm a news dude, and here's some news. Kanye West, who I hope is still watching this, recently returned to Twitter to announce numerous upcoming music projects, and then he said a whole bunch of other stuff, and people had reactions to it. He's officially a big fan of the president, and I won't say anything mean about Trump, because I know you love him, Kanye. He's your dragon energy brother. So I'll just say that one of the few people Trump has pardoned was a sheriff who reinstituted chain gangs. Some other things Kanye tweeted were about victim culture, about love, about free thought, and another one was, I love the way Candace Owens thinks. So who is Candace Owens, and what does she think? Well, she's a newly popular conservative YouTube star who got red-pilled and goes by Red Pill Black. According to her Twitter, she thinks Harriet Tubman said this. She didn't. And according to her YouTube, she thinks everyone these days is playing the oppression Olympics, and police brutality and racism aren't problems, they're in the past. So briefly, let's go to the past, before she was red-pill black, but after she received a settlement in a lawsuit for being sent racial slur-laden death threats from her town's mayor's son and his friends. Racism, not an issue. So before Candace Owens was red pill black, she was Candace Owens, and she had a Kickstarter for a website called Social Autopsy. The basic idea from April of 2016, which is not long ago, was to stop cyberbullying by allowing people to anonymously submit mean comments and posts that would be collected in a database which would contain offenders' personal information. This was seen by everyone as a poorly thought out idea that would allow and encourage doxing of people, including minors, as their personal information would be collected in an easily searchable database online and probably invite harassment. So Kickstarter shut it down because it was a bit too red pill black mirror and Candace re-emerged about a year later with a whole new set of conservative views, a free-thinking conservative voice. She explains to Dave Rubin on The Rubin Report that this was her red pill moment when she opened her eyes to the truth about the left and everything changed. She describes her website as simply anti-bullying without acknowledging how it could be used to dox people and she talks about the wave of left-wing hit jobs against her, which is odd because actually everybody thought this was a bad idea. Even sites like Breitbart referred to her as an SJW. So everyone thought your website was bad, so you were red-pilled? and changed all of your views? It seems a little disingenuous. I wish the interviewer asked her about that. But Candace's ideas tend to be a bit inconsistent. For example, when police brutality or shootings are brought up, the response from her, or maybe Kanye, or maybe all conservatives in the alt-right, is, well, what about black-on-black -black crime? But aside from the fact that discussing police brutality doesn't mean people don't care about other types of crime, the truth is that most homicides are committed by the race of the victim. Or as Candace herself has pointed out, In 2012, 84% of white homicides were committed by other white people. Go figure. But Candace does seem thrilled that Kanye loves the way she thinks. They were interviewed on TMZ together, have been photographed together. So what else does Candace think? Dear celebrities, I'm sorry to be the one to have to break this to you, but we do not care, not in the slightest particle of an imaginary thing, what you think. Yes, the one thing I know about Kanye is that he doesn't care about what Kanye thinks. I'm sorry, Kanye, I know you're still here. I don't want to offend you. I'm just joking around. You're a genius. I hope you keep, 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 keep watching. And we'll come back to this video from Prager University, which we'll be talking about a lot. But aside from not caring what celebrities think, like all conservatives according to conservatives, Candace's ethos is basically about shut up Black Lives Matter. Black people aren't oppressed. This is like the oppression Olympics. Quit whining, playing victims. Now, Kanye, I know you're excited about this. You recently tweeted that you're once again being attacked for new ideas. But these thoughts of Candace's aren't new ideas. Black people need to stop whining about the past is a tired old white conservative idea, repackaged for you now as a free thought, or a young white conservative idea from people like Tommy Loren or Charlie Kirk 
Who's Charlie Kirk, I wish you didn't ask? Well, he's the executive director of a conservative nonprofit called Turning Point USA, whose stated goal is to educate students about true free market values and smaller government. Basically, a libertarian org of young, cool guys pushing laissez faire capitalism. So they hired Candace Owens for urban engagement. Because when I think of being red pilled to believe feminism and white supremacy are a myth, I think of free market values. Though I suspect maybe she was hired because instead of Charlie Kirk thinking about yelling at Black Lives Matter for whining about false oppression, he can sit back and get a kick out of watching a black woman do it for him. I don't know why people like being oppressed. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I love oppression. We're oppressed. 400 years of slavery, Jim Crow, which by the way, none of you guys lived through. Your grandparents didn't. It's embarrassing that you utilize, you utilize their history. You're not living through anything right now. Free market values. But maybe Candace really does care about libertarian values. Or maybe Charlie Kirk knew that he needed to hire a black person because Turning Point USA seems to keep hiring racist people who tweet and text racist things. And when they fire one, they seem to keep hiring more racists to the point where they had to send out a memo offering everybody at the organization social media background checks. Charlie Kirk too has a video on Prager University, which we'll get to Kanye, I promise. Thank you for still being here. But Professor Kirk's video is about how college campuses are the least diverse places in America. America. The diversity I'm talking about is diversity of thought. Interesting point about college campuses, considering Charlie started Turning Point USA when he was 18 and never went to college, which actually statistically makes sense that he's such a Trump fan. Whatever. He goes on to implore us to think, when was the last time a professor on a college campus said that capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than any other economic system? I don't know, Charlie. Probably the last time someone was in an economics class discussing the benefits and flaws of capitalism, like, like college. This lack of diversity of ideas and freedom of thought is just a talking point meant to push old, tired, often bad ideas as secretly good as counterculture. Conservatism is the new counterculture. We're punks. We believe in law and order and strong borders and unregulated capitalism. Hell yeah, I'm a punk. Do whatever you want, capitalists. And by the way, trans people can fuck themselves. Your ideas are being oppressed, Charlie, you punk rock motherfucker. Shout it, shout about your oppression while on a stage sitting next to the president's sons on the most watched political talk show in America. And I'll ask a question to the audience. How many people here do you think have been targeted because you're conservative? Now that was three months before Charlie posted his complaint about lack of diversity of thought. And like Candace Owens' video about not caring what celebrities think, it appeared on Prager University, which we'll finally talk about. And Kanye, I hope you're sticking around. I bet you are. Yeah? All right. What's Prager University? Well, it's a YouTube channel from neoconservative talk radio host Dennis Prager. He, like Charlie, feels that universities are overrun by leftists and have been indoctrinated by those leftists teaching thousands of years of accumulated knowledge. So, having all the answers, Dennis Prager decided to start his own school with his producer, Alan Estrin, but decided it was too daunting. I had a revelation that rather than trying to build a building, we should do a virtual university, taking the best minds we could find and distilling them into five minutes. Ostensibly, this takes the far-right ideology of Dennis Prager, he edits all of the scripts, and puts it in shareable little propaganda videos to push Prager's religious and far-right ideology. According to Prager University's website, it's undoing the damage of the university, one five-minute video at a time. So universities are wrong about everything, and Dennis Prager is going to fix it. As Prager University's FAC explains, Prager University is not a university, and we do not offer degrees, but we are the most influential online resource for explaining concepts that have made America great, like cops are the good guys, and income inequality is good. And a lot of these videos are short, but misleading, and full of lies or half-truths, fallacies, contradictions, like even basic ones, like what's a greater leap of faith, God or the multiverse? As if believing in God precludes one from also believing in the multiverse. And the video, made by an alleged scientist, doesn't even mention that Isaac Newton was the first to theorize about the possibility of a multiverse, and in it he literally mentions God by name. Another of Prager's main views is that the left, not liberals, not communists, not socialists, not democrats, not social democrats, but simply the left, 
is bad for humanity and must be destroyed. He explains that leftists opposed the Vietnam War, which showed him that the left doesn't hate evil, communism. He elaborates on the Rubin Report with Dave Rubin, who also supports the marketplace of ideas without challenging them no matter how bad or wrong they might be. But let's hear what Prager has to say about the entire political left. Defeating the left is as great a moral urgency as defeating Islamism. Hmm. Those wow. Any response from Dave to that? Defeating the left is as great a moral urgency as defeating Islamism. Hmm. Those cool point, Dave. Now, this is something Rubin is criticized for a lot. He brings people on to his show to spout their ideas, but he never really challenges them. He doesn't question them. To him, the ability to say the idea, to have a free thought, is paramount to challenging and debating bad ideas with facts or critical thinking. When you have Lauren Southern on, and she says the Canadian Nazi party was started by Jewish people because they wanted more hate crimes, I know that sounds wrong, but like you, I wouldn't be able to challenge it outright. And of course it's not true. And Dave, she told you that Richard Spencer isn't a white supremacist, he's merely a white nationalist who wants a white ethno state. And you said nothing because you don't know how to argue with fascists, but you still have Milo on, who has been proven to be a paid troll trying to sneak white nationalist ideas into the zeitgeist. And here's Professor Rubin's Prager University video, Why I Left the Left, about PC culture and the oppression Olympics, because when I have a myriad of left-leaning opinions on policy and culture and society and history, as soon as it gets a little too PC, I am out of there. I'm a classical liberal, a free thinker. The home for classical liberalism is the Republican Party. Maybe why you left the left and are in Prager University videos is because of, wait, wait, where's some news? Oh, here's some news, money. Because Turning Point USA, this organization that is about freedom, not a political ideology, is funded by the Koch brothers, libertarian billionaires from the fossil fuel industry. Now, if you don't know about the Koch brothers, they're, like I said, billionaires, who, thanks to Citizens United, are allowed to spend exorbitant amounts of money on political action groups and donate to campaigns, and they've spent a lot of their money to sneak their ideas into college campuses. They want free markets, climate change denial, laissez-faire capitalism with few to no regulations to protect consumers or curb carbon emissions to make them money. Rubin will often describe this via his classical liberal views, or as he puts it, Live and let live. Live and let live. Live and let live. Just let people and companies do whatever they want in the pursuit of higher profit, a historically good motivator to do the right thing. It's not just about the markets, though. Like I said, it's known via leaked emails that Milo is a troll paid by the Mercers to sneak white nationalism and other toxic ideas into the discourse. The Koch brothers are linked to the Federalist Society, which leaked emails reveal are trying to stack university staffs with friends and ultra-conservatives, not because of a love of teaching, but because they're creating a pipeline into government and the judiciary. One of the Koch's picks wrote a paper supporting ethno-nationalism, claiming it was an accepted and common feature of liberal democracy. But don't worry, that person is currently on leave, acting as counsel to the Department of Education, run by Betsy DeVos, daughter of the DeVosses, who are just two more of the many billionaires who meet with the Koch brothers at least twice a year to discuss strategies such as these. It's almost like, Dave, maybe the real threat to free thought and academic freedom is this fucking handful of billionaires and the donor class so easily having their hands in all these ideological manipulative college campus movements instead of say a handful of vocal anti-racist activism on campus. But I don't expect you to care, Dave, because the Rubin Report has a pay-to-play partnership with Learn Liberty, a libertarian organization tied to the Koch brothers. Hmm, I wonder why Dave suddenly started calling himself a classical liberal. Well, I have been a libertarian in my past, but now I, I consider myself a classical liberal. Of course, here's some news. It's not just the Kochs. Like I said, the DeVosses do this. And there's the Wilkes brothers, energy industry billionaires, one of whom thinks homosexuality is equivalent to bestiality. But don't worry, he's not trying to sneak his ideas into the discourse. He and his brother are just the sole funders of Prager University. But I thought Prager's website is covered with buttons to donate, claiming they're funded by the viewers. But it's the Wilkes bros? Dang.
These Richies, wanting to get more Richie, probably explains why PragerU has so many videos about how sure the rich are getting richer, but the poor are getting richer at a faster rate, despite the data not backing that up. And when you click in the Sources tab, that claim takes you to an article written by the guy who made the video, and the article doesn't back up the claim, and it's published on a website owned by the homophobic and anti-marijuana billionaire who also owns Coachella. Probably why there are so many blindly pro-capitalism and free market videos, and a video by Professor Steven Crowder about socialism, in which he fundamentally fundamentally does not understand what socialism is the workers owning the means of production says that just adding the word democratic in front of socialism doesn't change its meaning except yeah, it does, Stephen. That's what words do. And Professor Crowder closes it out with, hey, wannabe socialists, get a job. Quit asking for free stuff. Again, misunderstanding what socialism is. This school fucking sucks. I hope they don't talk about climate change. But of course they do, hooray! Yes, a pet project of Koch brothers and other rich brothers is to deny climate change and push climate denial with purposely misleading arguments and omitting facts. And there is a long list of easily debunkable lies. So in lieu of a climate lesson, I'd just like to show you a clip of Prager University's leading climate skeptic, a Greenpeace founder who now runs a PR firm that defends energy companies from accusations of environmental impropriety. I do not believe that glyphosate in Argentina is causing increases in cancer. You can drink a whole quart of it and it won't hurt you. It's, uh, it, you want to drink some? We have some here. I'd be happy to, actually. But you, not, not really, but... Not really? I know it wouldn't hurt I mean, me. If, if, if you say so, I have some glyphosate. No, no, I'm not stupid. Hell yeah. Give that guy a class to teach. And this is what a lot of these Prager University professors do. It's what the Candace Owens and Charlie Kirks are doing. They have a feeling, something they want people to believe, but don't back it up. Like when Candace goes on Fox News and says, I believe that their ideas are poisonous. Um, I also believe that they are intellectually dishonest or intellectually lazy, depending on what you want to take a pick at. Because the truth is, the numbers are in, okay? Police brutality is not an issue that is facing the black community whatsoever. First of all, Poisonous, intellectually dishonest, and lazy ideas? Ooh, boy. But also, what do you mean the numbers are in? What numbers? The numbers that show that police brutality is an issue? You can't just say stuff without backing it up. Well, you can on Fox News and Prager University. These people feel a thing without the fact backing it up. They feel like conservatives are being censored on YouTube because some of their videos have been restricted. But restricted mode is an optional mode on YouTube, and it restricts videos usually based on an algorithm because of subject matter, not viewpoint, to protect children from maybe delicate subjects or from hateful ideologues with the goal of, uh, uh, sorry, what's the, what's the, what's the word? Prager, can you help me out? Uh, um, what is the word? Uh, Oh, when, uh, when you're not taught, you are indoctrinated. Right on. I'm sure you had some real trouble thinking of that word. But your videos aren't restricted because you're conservative. It's because of some of the ideas you talk about. Leftist YouTuber ContraPoints has had her videos restricted. One was about gender. One was called Why White Nationalism is Wrong. Her video criticizing Dave Rubin called Does the Left Hate Free Speech was restricted. So your feeling of leftist, authoritarian, anti-speechism is perhaps not backed up by facts. Prager has gone so far as to sue YouTube for censorship. Wonder where he got the money for that. And eventually he lost because YouTube is a private company and free market and all that. Sure, you feel improperly censored, but the facts don't line up. In Professor Kirk's PragerU lecture, he specifically calls out UC Berkeley for not promoting speech diversity. But PragerU has a video on their channel of Dennis Prager speaking at UC Berkeley. Dave Rubin and Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens all just spoke at UC Berkeley. And speaking of facts, let's say at that event, Charlie Kirk feels like immigrants commit more crime than non-immigrants. So he says that. And during the Q&A, someone accuses him of lying. So he says, lie. Name Trump one, said, name so one. You said. And the person points out that he only cited a single study from Arizona that's actually an outlier on this topic. And all other studies and FBI data indicate that immigrants, illegal or otherwise, commit less crime than non-immigrants. We've mentioned this study before. White nationalist-ish Tucker Carlson was thrilled to cite it without citing any of the studies before or 
or after to disprove it. We've got the data now, and it turns out, surprise, surprise, they've been lying to you. Yeah, we have the data now, Tucker. The study comes from John Lott, a controversial economist who's had his methods and data questioned a myriad of times, and who at one point created a fake persona to write articles about how great his research is. But Charlie, no matter what your feelings about immigrant crime are, the facts don't back it up. And I'm sorry, but to coin a phrase, facts, facts don't, don't care, care about, about your, your feelings. feelings. Oh, good, Ben Shapiro from The Daily Wire, the only publication owned by the hilariously named Forward Publishing, which is owned by, oh fun, the Wilkes Brothers of Prager University fame. In his Prager U lecture, after lying in the first two sentences, Shapiro discusses victim mentality and how just because you feel a way, it doesn't change the facts. And he of course does this by straw man arguments and dishonesty and saying nobody's a victim, you just need to fix yourself, pull yourself up by your boots. Bootstraps, a phrase, by the way, that was originally coined to point out how ridiculous that idea is. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Helping each other is good, Ben. Facts don't care. Anyway, Ben talks about how everyone's a victim but white men, and the video culminates in him citing a Brookings Institution study that proves that it's all in your hands. If you make just these three decisions, you'll do fine. First, finish high school. Second, don't have babies before you're married. Third, hold down a job. This study is from 2003, and the Brookings Institution released another study in 2015 that shows that success via these three rules is more likely if you're white. I guess they just have better bootstraps. So Prager University plays pretty fast and loose with facts and ideas. Again, their climate change denial is fucking madness. Here's another Prager University video with Professor Dinesh D'Souza claiming that fascism is left-wing, citing the conservative fascist who hated socialism. Professor Steven Crowder has a whole video on his own website about how Hitler was a liberal socialist, which is some of the dumbest shit he's ever said, and it's full of lies and misattributed quotes, and I'm pretty sure he knows it, so I'm not even gonna bother. Okay, just one. Crowder, you say Nazis were left-wing because they believed in abortion, but maybe believing in a woman's right to choose isn't the same as believing in the state's right to force abortions on women for the purposes of eugenics. You know, Nazi stuff. These fucking clowns just cannot grapple with the fact that their policies and ideas, when put together and taken to the extreme, are fascist. You can still think fascism is bad, but at least own it. Democrats criticize socialism and communism all the time, but nobody on the left is sitting anywhere saying, well, actually, communism is a far-right ideology. You fucking dolts, you absolute morons. You wanna know what fascism is? Look for the blind nationalism, pro-capitalism, anti-protest, pro-cop, anti-the-entire-left, pro-military, fabricated free speech victimhood, law and order, anti-feminist, anti-civil rights, anti-immigrant, pro-wall, anti-union, fake school that wants to teach your children. Or look at the current president, and I'm sorry, Kanye, again, I don't want to insult Trump, I could give a long list of reasons he's a fascist, but this is all about love. So I'm gonna close with a clip of yours that I think you and at least Candace Owens should see. Three days before Candace posted her original video about how she doesn't care about what celebrities think, which was repurposed for PragerU, three days before that, she posted a video of you speaking here about everyone coming together. We're all one family, and we have the ability to approach our race like ants, but we have the ability to approach our race like crabs. Beauty has been stolen from the people. All the best talent in the world needs to work for the people. Which is practically the antithesis of what Turning Point USA and Prager University talk about. If you bring up welfare, crabs would call it handouts. Ants would call it food for everyone. Ants pooling resources together to create a better colony to help each other might be called taxes. Crabs would call it theft. Crabs want to live and let live, free markets, but ants... It's the workers who control the means of production. So it's interesting that Candace was so attracted to these ideas, but ended up with these fucking twerps, and has started to bring you with her. I don't know what it means. Maybe nothing. I'm just having some free thoughts. And Kanye, I know you're still here. I am confident that you have watched every second of this, so thank you for sticking around. You're a genius, and I wish you the best, but... Actually, I lost my train of thought. 
gonna have to do this all over again. Dang, all right. Hey Kanye, and everybody else, but mostly Kanye. I'm just gonna get it out there and stick with me. I hope this will make sense when I'm done. But you're actually being indoctrinated by an old neoconservative white man and a cabal of dishonest reactionaries who have seeped into the public discourse by a dark money from libertarian billionaires. But perhaps I've said too much. Hey Kanye, thanks for watching Kanye. Like and subscribe Kanye. Comment Kanye and donate to our Patreon Kanye and listen to our podcast Kanye. And all those links are in the description Kanye.